It's not always dropping melody notes and leaving empty space. Sometimes it's dropping melody notes and filling the space in other ways, like with the fifth string, or with a multi-string brush stroke rather than isolating one string. To me, those are the most powerful rhythmic devices that we have in the claw hammer style, and uh, I've got to make room for those in my arrangements. Otherwise, I might as well be flat picking. I tell my students uh -huh. that all the time if they're bringing me things that they've kind of worked out their own way, whether from a banjo reference or a fiddle reference, and I'm not hearing an abundance of fifth string, or I'm not hearing it in a particularly organized way, or if I'm not hearing many brushes, or if it's just all eighth notes with no quarter notes at all, I tell them, you know, that doesn't sound a whole lot like claw hammer banjo to me. That sounds more like flat picking. Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that, but if we're going to go to the trouble of playing this funny instrument configuration with the drone string, we might as well honor where that's coming from, I think. Right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed in um, a lot of um, beginning, more beginning claw hammer players is because you mentioned the fifth string. The fifth string is too present where the fifth mm. strings like just like that thumb. How do you keep that fifth string going without it being this kind of obnoxious, you know, tone that's coming across everything? Right. That's a great question and an important point. Even though I want the fifth string to be present, I don't want it to be like the thing that we hear because that's just going to be obnoxious. So I, I teach a lot and I love it. This couldn't be a, a more enjoyable way for me to make my living as a musician, but it's, it forces me to constantly like reassess my sense of how the instrument works and how the style works and find new ways of expressing how I feel about it all to different students who have different understandings of all of this. And the explanation that I've been liking lately for how to deal with the fifth string is I think of it as the heartbeat of the claw hammer banjo style always ticking along in the background in a fairly regular sort of way, just like our hearts beat in a very metronomic sort of way, but in a way that we're not super conscious of. I mean, if we were having to focus on our heartbeats all the time to make sure that the rest of our bodies were doing what they were supposed to do, that'd be an awful lot to stress out about, and thank goodness we don't have to do that. The heartbeat is just not in focus, but it's it's always there and it's making everything else happen. The fifth string, with a handful of exceptions, I don't think really needs to be in focus, but it should always be there just ticking along in the background and it's the, uh, the structure that helps make everything else the right hand does and the left hand to a certain extent does happen.